Uh, St. Thursday's Orthodox Christian Community was founded in um, 1998 uh, when three members of my former Anglican Church became Orthodox with me and the question arose who was St. Thursday? And I had discovered that St. Thursday was a monk from Northern Ireland, from Ulster. Uh, he had become a very devout Christian in his homeland and he was the son of a local prince called Fintan. And he uh, decided he did not want to become a ruler in a secular world, he became a monk instead. And he persuaded his two brothers, Phelan and Altan, to become monks with him in uh, Ulster. And after a while, he was eager to proclaim the gospel to other lands where it had not been preached before. And he learned about the pagans in Britain and especially in East Anglia. And he travelled across Britain with Ultan and Phelan with two other friends, Goban and Decal. The five of them came to East Anglia just at the time when uh, Sigbert, the king, a young Christian who had uh, returned from the continent uh, to be the ruler of East Anglia and this was in the year 630 and uh, Sigbert the king gave Fursey uh, the Roman fort at Borough Castle just on the outskirts of uh, Great Yarmouth, a very remarkable structure and St Fursey with his brothers and companion uh, monks established their monastery at Borough Castle and uh, they were very influential in spreading the Christian faith in the eastern part of uh, Norfolk and uh, there are many round towered churches in eastern Norfolk and it's possible that they have a Celtic influence um, derived from the 7th century town of St Fursey, even though quite a number of them were built later. And after a while, uh, St Fursey, having accomplished what he wanted to do, um, moved across the Channel to um, France, uh, to Picardy, the northern France, and... Sorry, can we just put down pause, right? Just a lot of noise in the background. Yeah, yeah. Also, by the way, feel happy to talk about the icon. Yeah. You know, with the, uh, the fortress and stuff on there. If you, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sorry, we can edit it. It's fine. Yeah, the icon which I'm holding of St. Fursey was written by uh, Leon, an icon painter at our Orthodox monastery in Walsingham. And he's gone to God now. Um, and he. Uh, was inspired by the visions which St. Fursey had of hell and heaven. And he was um, conscious of the reality in his dream of purgatory and the presence of the evil one there. And you can see the uh, details of the devil there. And also, because we were near to the sea, we have the uh, sea, the water there, and also the Venerable Bede, in his History of the English Church and People, refers to St. Fursey in his third book, the 19th chapter, of um, the monastery being among a lot of trees. So here we have the trees, and um, Leon, uh, being from the Russian tradition, um, painted the icon, uh, the um, on the icon of the monastery as he 
en envisage it. It's a bit dramatic, a bit more elaborate than the real one, which St. Fergie built. It would have been just a timber structure. And here we have the angels um, in the vision that St. Fergie had. And th this is the sticaria of the uh, of a Orthodox monk, the schema. And so St. Fursey left uh, Norfolk around about the year 645. We're not quite sure exactly when. It was a trouble with some time because of the um, invasions of various kingdoms by Penda, the King of Mercia. Penda, during his terrible rule of Mercia, killed five Christian kings and Oswald was one of them and the um, story goes that St. Fursey uh, moved across to um, Picardy in, in northern France to establish another monastery there in about the year uh, 645. He left Phelan to look after the monastery at Borough Castle but Phelan um, moved across to um, join St. Fursey uh, soon afterwards. Uh, Altan also moved across in time. Decal, he uh, became a missionary in the south of England and he established a monastery in Sussex at a place, a place called Beauchamp. And St. Wilfrid met him when he went down there to do some missionary work too in the late uh, 690s when uh, Decor was um, much older. It's possible that the um, little village of Dickleborough here in Norfolk was named after Decor. And so um, St. Phelan, the brother of St. Fursey, was martyred um, in 655 by some robbers but St. Fursey died a natural death at Perone in um, 6.50 on the 16th of January. We're not sure what happened to Goban. And uh, that is basically the story of St. Fursey. And uh, we are building a new church now here in Stalham uh, for our community here in an area where St. Fursey formerly ministered. So that is why we have him as our patron saint. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Have I gone on too long? No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> no the more the better, because we can just chop yeah, it off. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, what about, what about um, St. Fursey's vision? Can you tell us a bit about, about kind of St. Fursey's vision of, of heaven and how it's indeed, isn't it? Uh, yes. Um, in, in fact, um, St. Fursey was prone to having uh, visions um, as a part of his spiritual life. We think also that his health was not robust. And so when he was ill, these visions came to him. And one of the earlier visions, we're not sure whether it happened in um, Borough Castle or whether it happened to him uh, when he was still um, in Ulster. Uh, but one um, vision was of a um, wound which he had in his body which hurt him very much. And he was conscious of this wound uh, being the result of a sin which he um, had committed, uh, the stealing of um, some um, jewellery from someone, which he was not really guilty of, but he was associated with a, a wrong deed. And uh, St. Fursey was very sensitive to his part in it, but he wasn't directly guilty of any wrongdoing, but he was aware of what had gone on and it troubled his conscience uh, and the 
vision of the um, hell reassured him uh, that the ills of his day were the results of the sins of the people of his day. And of course, that is very relevant for us today uh, with the um, problems that we have at the moment. We are all guilty of abusing the environment. And that is very much the story of St. Fur's visions in the seventh century. And also it is thought that the visions, the second vision which um, St. Fursey had you know, was of, well, what is called in the eyes of some um, theologians, uh, a premonition of uh, purgatory. But I'm not sure that that's true. What the idea of purgatory came very late in Western um, Christianity um, and after the Great Schism, really. Uh, so it's not very likely that uh, St. Fursey's vision was the original idea causing the later doctrine of purgatory. Uh, what it probably indicates is our orthodox um, insight into the progress of a soul in paradise through what in orthodox terms we would call the toll houses uh, and the toll houses are not absolutely doctrinally um, accepted throughout orthodoxy it's a, an opinion that some orthodox have it's not doctrinally uh, a must which everybody has got to believe but the teaching of our Lord Jesus in my father's house are many mansions suggests that in the life to come our soul needs to progress through um, various stages of spiritual life because of the sins we have and the sufferings we've had in our earthly life. So these visions of uh, St. Fursey, I believe, are more to do with the passage of the soul through paradise, not anything to do with purgatory, as some people maintain. So, is that all right? Yeah, no, that's great. And, yeah. and what was the, the reason which the parish chose St. Fursey's as our patron saint? The when I first came to Norfolk in 1984 uh, from a curacy in Essex, um, there was a pilgrimage at Borough Castle organised by some local priests um, and the priest from Suffolk came as well and the idea was that the um, to, it was the Federation of Catholic Priests in the Church of England. The southern group from Suffolk came down the River Waveney to Borough Castle and we met them there. And the, bishop, the new bishop, uh, Peter Knott, uh, led the pilgrimage. And he spoke about uh, St. Fursey bringing to Norfolk um, a Celtic form of Christianity and uh, the first bishop of East Anglia, St. Felix, he came from Burgundy in uh, western, eastern France. Um, he um, brought a more Latin form of Christianity to Norfolk as the first bishop. And this, is, this talk by Bishop Peter Knott interested me in St. Fursey because I'd never ever heard of him before. And as my uh, studies developed, I discovered uh, that, with all due respect to Bishop Peter, um, St. Felix from Burgundy had a Celtic past as well. 
because he had been a uh, disciple of Saint Columbanus, who was a Celtic uh, missionary who established Celtic monasteries in Europe. Uh, and so Saint Felix had as much a Celtic past as St. Fursy did. That is why I think they were so happy to work together in evangelising um, Norfolk and Suffolk. Uh, and so when I read about St. Fursy in the Venerable Bede, and those who would like to refer to Bede, it's book three, chapter 19, you want to read. And Bede had a very um, profound respect for St. Fursy because for some Celtic Christians the Bede was not very favourable but he did have high regard for St. Fursy for his sheer goodness and kindness and gentleness. This were the hallmarks of St. Fursy's character and a zeal for spreading the Christian faith in a loving and caring way. And it is the Bede who tells us that he was so eager to spread the gospel in wherever there was an opening, to use his phrase. And that's why he came to Norfolk in 630, because there was an opening here for the Christian evangelism which St. Fursley was so eager to spread. And sure enough, the fact that the Christian church did spread in East Anglia so rapidly uh, is a testimony to the work that St. Fursley did together with his brothers, Phelan and Altan, and the priests, Goban and Dicor. There. Mm. Oh, I've got long enough. <laughs> no, that's great. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks yeah. My phone ran out of storage halfway, we just did like the last kind of three or four minutes. But yeah. if you, All right, if, if, you, you can sort it. something out among yourselves on that. No, that's great. Thank yeah. you very much, Father. That's, that's All right, great. All right. yeah. Good out, super. Excellent. All right, I'm jiggered. <laughs>